So enzymes, enzymes at Hippocrates, you know, we love enzymes, and what, what are enzymes? Enzymes are basically parts of protein with the ability to do work. So the work that we want done here is to help to break down, to liquefy your nutrients to allow greater absorption of the nutrients. And you might have heard of this old saying, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. But really you are what you absorb, and absorption at the cellular level is what we're looking for here. And if you ever wanted to measure that out, there's a really great tool out there called the SpectraCell test. And that literally opens up a white blood cell and they can see what you're absorbing at the cellular level as far as your vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And our absorption, our breakdown of nutrients starts with these guys here, our teeth. We need to chew our foods, take our time, and as we're chewing our foods, we're bringing in saliva that has an enzyme called amylase that's breaking down your carbohydrates and starches to simple sugars for better absorption. And here it says, what about drinking fluids? Well, ideally you want to avoid fluids about 15 minutes before a meal and about an hour after, depending on what you're eating. The reason being, it could potentially dilute some of those enzymes from doing that work to allow the absorption. Now, if you need to drink, you drink, it's okay, but I'm always going to tell you where we can go to go optimal with our health. So enzymes, we were talking a bit about them there, and they help to catalyze different functions. They help with our physiological temperatures. They help with almost every aspect of our life. So they're critically important, and there's thousands of different enzymes here, and some experts believe over 50,000 enzymes that are out there that we haven't yet even discovered. And you know they help with our building our raw materials, circulating nutrients, eliminating the chemicals in our body, they even help with the, the life when you uh, are born, they, when the egg and the sperm meet, that is an enzymatic action there. So enzymes, we talked about that amylase coming from your saliva, it's breaking down the carbohydrates and starches, the simple sugars. Lipase is an enzyme that helps to break down your fats to the fatty acids. Pepsin's coming from the stomach. It's helping to break down your proteins to the amino acids. And hydrochloric acid, this is in the stomach, and the stomach's a place we truly do want acidic, and that's actually a non-specific barrier for our immune system. So what that means is if you eat something and by accident has a little bit of bacteria on there, that acid's going to help to break down and kill that bacteria to protect you that hydrochloric acid is also going to help to break down your proteins as well. So this is that journey with the stomach. So like we said, it needs to be an acidic environment. But sometimes when we've eaten heat-treated proteins or animal products over long periods of time, sometimes our stomach starts producing too much acid. And when you start producing too much acid, you could potentially have situations like ulcers come up, acid reflux, and a host of other issues, and it can also create pain. And a lot of times when we're in pain, we tend to do things we normally wouldn't do, like reaching for a Tums or a Rolaids to help to neutralize that acid to help decrease that pain. Now, they actually do what they say they do. They really do neutralize the acid, although it's going to make it almost impossible for you to absor absorb your protein normally at that point. So, a better remedy to help to neutralize that acid would be supplemental digestive enzymes prior to meals to help to neutralize that acid, break down your foods to allow greater absorption of your nutrients. So stomach functions, there's many storing the food, it's breaking down your food into a chyme, that's a liquid mixture of your food at that point. It's acidic, a pH between two and three normally breaks down the protein, kills bacteria, and with that, um, it helps with that emptying of the gastrointestinal system to help with absorption, and you know, really just the sugar alcohols are the things that can be absorbed within the stomach region. So this is an idea of the journey here. Now, if we were having our head up here, and we're chewing our foods well, we're breaking them down, taking our time, bringing in the saliva, and that has that amylase breaking down the carbohydrates and starches and then it's coming down the esophagus here into the stomach with the addition of the pepsin and hydrochloric acid 
getting rid of bacteria, breaking down our proteins, and at that point we have what's called an acid chyme, a liquid mixture of our food. And as that moves into that's called the duodenum there, that little pink tube there, it's about a foot long like a garden hose if you would, the liver at that point is going to start secreting bile and the gallbladder is going to start secreting bile and your pancreas is going to start secreting different pancreatic juices and enzymes and what's really interesting is that highly acid mixture of your food as it comes down that about a foot long tube is going to become alkaline on the other end and it's moving into your small intestine where 90 percent of the absorption is going to occur. So small intestine that's 22 to 28 feet in length these guys here and that's like we said 90 percent of the absorption is occurring there and they have these little finger like projections uh, that help with that absorption of our nutrients. Now when we stay chronically dehydrated and we have waste and other toxins building up in our system they can actually get on our small intestine too and that's called a mucoid plaque and if you do potentially get that in your system it's going to make it very challenging for you to absorb your nutrients properly at that point. So here what happens when we are chronically dehydrated? What's going to make it very challenging to make that conversion from acid to alkaline and what we found at Hippocrates, most disease processes will thrive in that acidic environment. So we work to alkalize the body and I'm going to give you some things that will help you to alkalize as well. But like I said, our body is extremely intelligent. So when we're not giving it the water that it needs, it's going to look around and say, well, where can I get that water? <laughs>